Universal Stories have been tonight an attack on my book, Killing Reagan. Syndicated columnist George Will, who also works here at the Fox News Channel, wrote a column entitled Bill O'Reilly Slanders Ronald Reagan. After reading the column, I can say with certainty, George Will libels Bill O'Reilly. So Will joins us now from Washington. So you write that my book is a no facts zone. Let's talk about the facts. Fox News hard news chief Mike Clemente, you know, told us that you told him you would call me before the column was published. Did you call me? No, and I didn't promise to call you. You have my phone number, and if you wanted to call I, me, I, you could. I couldn't care less about it. I didn't know what you were doing. Now, are you calling Mr. Clemente a liar? No, I'm not. I'm saying either you've got it wrong. It would not be the first time you got something wrong. Okay, I have it in writing. I have it in writing from Mr. Clemente. So you're either saying well, Mr. Clemente. Look. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that you wanna, our hard news you, chief said that you told him you would call me. Are you denying you, that tonight? Do you want to talk about Bill Riley or about Bill Riley? Okay, book? my name is O'Reilly. Do you want to deny that Clemente? Do you want to say that he's not telling the truth? I, I'm saying there was a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. If he said that. Mr. Right. Clemente is a tremendously honest man. Okay, good, because I, we have it in writing that you were supposed to call me and you did not call me. And by writing a provocative column like this, you had an obligation as a journalist to do that. All right, page 245 in Killing Reagan is what your real beef is about. It's a meeting on March 2nd, 1987. The meeting was called by Howard Baker, then the new chief of staff for Ronald Reagan. Before the meeting took place, Howard Baker asked his uh, assistant, James Cannon, to investigate Ronald Reagan, to investigate him. Are you denying any of that is true? Of course not. You, you say that that memo he wrote is the centerpiece of a book. It's a memo that you have never seen. It's a memo that you didn't even ask to try to see from the Reagan Library until after the book was in print. It's a memo that the Reagan Library doesn't have, and you should know it doesn't have, because the author was not a member of the White House staff. Where is that memo? It's probably in the papers of Mr. Cannon. No, it's not. Well, then, then it's then I don't know where it is. But do you I didn't deny make the, the memo? Do you, do you then deny the memo the was written? Of the book. Do you deny of the course, memo was written? Of course not. It was written. Okay. You learned about it from you learned about it. I presume from Jane Meyer's book. Where in no, she says of sources, which you did not repeat. There's a number of sources that, that the author of the memo went on to repudiate and deny the memo. When did he, repu the when did he repudiate it? When did he repudiate it, Mr. Cannon? When? Shortly after meeting Ronald Reagan. And who? No, not meeting Ronald Reagan. He repudiated it while he was in the White House under heavy pressure. Michael Deaver, do you know Michael <laughs> Deaver? Oh, what, what, are you, what are you laughing at, Will? You deny that he repudiated under heavy pressure? Do you deny that? I deny that you know that he repudiated under okay. heavy pressure. Okay. You know who Michael Deaver is? Of course. Tell the, the, tell the, the audience Michael who he Deaver. is. Tell the audience the late who Michael is. Michael Deaver was yeah. a longtime assistant to uh, Ronald Reagan. Okay. Here's a quote from Michael Deaver. All right. After a day and a half of briefings, but without seeing the president, they delivered to Baker a stunning report. He would have to be prepared at any time to invoke the 25th Amendment, which would remove a president if he was unfit to serve. They, the president, had concluded was on the brink of being physically and mentally incapable of carrying out his responsibilities. Unquote. Michael Deaver, behind the scenes, that's a quote in his book. Do you deny that that happened? The memo was presented to Howard Baker, who commissioned it. Deal with Deaver, at, deal at with Deaver, at, his friend, his close friend, with, as you just described. Deal with that. Explain no. that. The memo was presented to Howard Baker. Howard Baker took one look at it and said to the man who wrote it, this is not the Ronald Reagan I know, and that was the end of the That was not the end of it. The You're not telling the had. truth. I'm, you are yes, actively misleading the American people. You are You're lying. You're something of an expert on you actively are, misleading you people. You are lying, and here's more proof. Edmund Morris, you know who he is? You know who Edmund yes. Morris is? Go, go ahead. Okay. Okay, here it is. Edwin Morris, quote, during one unhappy period, when the Iran-Contra scandal coincided with prostate problems for Mr. Reagan, the president was so withdrawn and confused that papers were surreptitiously drawn up by staffers concerned he might have to be declared disoriented. Okay? Now that is from the guy who wrote the bio. You want L.A. Times? You want New York Times quotes on it? I got them. I can read them to you. You who began this interview by saying I had a moral obligation to call you by for writing about your book, wrote a book without feeling any obligation to talk to Ed Meese, George Schultz, Jim Baker, any of the other people who could have refuted the thesis. And why did I not thesis. talk to them? 
Because they would have refuted the no, flimsy thesis. Because they you have, have skin in the game. We don't talk to people when we're writing our books. You mean they not? To, they have knowledge of the they game. They have skin in the game, emotion in the game, spin in the game. We don't talk to anybody who was derogatory uh, to the Reagans or anybody who was laudatory. We do our own investigation. You want me to read more? I got more. This meeting absolutely took place on page 245. It was absolutely taken seriously by Mr. Baker and everybody else. And the conclusion of the meeting was the, the president was fine. He was capable. And Killing Reagan is a laudatory book toward Ronald Reagan. And, then, and you didn't even mention that. It is not a laudatory book. It, it is, is doing a laudatory book the, the, or you it can't is doing read. The work of the, it is doing the work of the left, which knows that in order to discredit conservatism, it must destroy Reagan's reputation as a president. And your book does the work of the American left with its extreme recklessness. And when you, you finally got around after the book's publication to scheduling an interview with Ed Meese, you then canceled it saying you we were vetting the memo. We canceled it because Ed Meese you you wanted to come on memo, with conditions. You, Nobody comes on you with haven't conditions. Even seen, so I do not understand how you vet a memo you've never seen. All right, look, here's the deal. That memo was written. That meeting took place. All of what we write in Killing Reagan is true. You're a hack. You're in with the cabal of the Reagan loyalists who don't want the truth to be told. Killing Reagan is a laudatory book. It praises Ronald Reagan. Yet you didn't call me when you said you would. That's why a fact. Did Ray, why do Reagan loyalists not want this laudatory book Because published? they wanted a Very deification. Curious. They wanted a deification. They tried to get the book killed before it was even published. And you that is, play right that, into the hands. That, by the way, is a lie. That, by the way, is a lie. That isn't a lie. And we can prove it. And you do are so. a hack. Do so. Do Bye. so, Mr. O'Reilly.